Amazingly, this is the last set of clips from my trip in 2014. It's only taken four years, but I've finally gotten through all of them. And I think I accidentally saved the best for last. I think this was probably the coolest trail that I did uh, on that whole trip. Certainly the, uh, the scariest for me. These trails are all downhill mountain yeah. biking trails in Downeyville, California. Right. Yeah, I don't um, so we took like this <laughs> this sunrise trail down to the, the Butcher Ranch Trail and then did the, the divide rides. So uh, all of these trails are pretty narrow for the big bikes. There were actually uh, three of us here on, on big bikes at this point. This was actually kind of cool. Some people from the adventure rider community had reached out to me and said, hey, if you're in the area, you should come up and stop by, say hi, do some riding, and, and ended up tagging along with them to, to this ride. So really, really cool opportunity, and they, they really pushed me outside my comfort zone on this bike. I'd never really done off-road riding like this on the big, big bike before. So I'm still kind of feeling it out, and the, the tires I have aren't really made for this. I have, I have Heidenau's on it, and fortunately it was dry. The Heidenau's are not good tires uh, for off-road stuff. With my tire with no treads in the middle. I'm still trying to get used to standing on the bike and carrying momentum, and I had also just had Super Plush do the suspensions. So I'm still learning what the bike can do again. And of course, I fell right at the beginning of the day. Lots of gas. Ooh, lots of oil. Right through the clutch cover. So, usually, when I drop the 950, it just spills a bunch of gas out of the tanks. The I did the flappendectomy, which was probably not something I needed to do, and so it, it dumps fuel out of the overflow as well. But when I tipped over and poked a hole through my clutch cover, I thought it was gas, and unfortunately it wasn't. So, so I poked that hole through the clutch cover, and I actually rode it with a hole in it for a little while. Um, the, these engines are dry sump engines, so the oil isn't actually in the crankcase, so there's just a little bit of an oil spray uh, coming out hitting my boot. And then when the trail opened up, uh, I stopped, pulled that cover off, and I always carry JB Weld with me, so uh, JB welded it back together and, and kept going. So it, it was not a great confidence builder at the beginning of the day, and uh, I'm a little bit afraid of heights. So, as you can see, there's more and more exposure. I think by this point we're on the, the first divide, or sorry, third divide trail. Pretty narrow up here. I'm going to go real They're slow. numbered the opposite of what I'd expect. It's third's the top, second's the middle, and first divide is the bottom. Uh, so we did all three of those. And obviously, I need to stand more. I, I need to be looser over the bike. I'm learning as I go on this trail, and it's a sketchy place to learn. Uh, the guys on the bike behind me are uh, <laughs> talking in my ear. I, I kind of heard a gasp of air on that little bobble there. Yeah. You lose a bike down that hill, it's going to be impossible to get it back out. And even watching this video, like, being scared of heights, I'm looking at how close my front wheel is to the edge in some of these spots, and it makes my feet sweat, it makes my palms sweat. But man, it's, it's beautiful. I, when I was there, I don't actually remember looking down very much, but in the videos you get to kind of see 
where you were and what you were doing. So I think that's this right here is probably the bottom of third divide, and now I'm on second divide. I, I can't remember where the switchover was. Again, this was four years ago, so I'm really grasping at memories here. Fortunately, there were some spots where it opened up, and it's really smooth because it's a mountain biking trail, so I could kind of rest because I was hanging on for dear life in the parts that were scary to me. You're trying to keep the handlebars from hitting the sheer rock walls on your left, because if you hit those, it's going to push you over. And you can see there, my side stand hit that rock, and uh, it's a long way down. <laughs> 950s do not have a tight turning radius either, so you're kind of right on the edge of, of how tight you can turn to get around this stuff. And almost all of this... I. I can't remember again if it was a second or first divide, but almost all of both of those have quite a bit of exposure. And it just kept getting worse. And, uh, you know, again, really cool, but the risk is high if you screw up, and I was still learning. You can see I'm being really ginger with it. I'm sitting down so I can put my feet on the ground if I have to. Trying not to look down. The, the camera's on my helmet so you can see. I've, I've got my eyes glued to that trail. If I look down the hill, uh, you go where you look, right? Bang the passenger pegs into that rock. <laughs> you just can't go fast. I mean, I, I'm, at least at this point, was not really a quick rider. I didn't know how to turn the bike quickly, but these trails were so slow, we were all kind of going the same speed. As one of the guys said, it's the big bikes aren't about getting through it quickly, they're about getting through it, period. There were some spots where the trail opened up, and as soon as the trail opens up, I'm not, or at least at that point, was not terribly aggressive on the bike. Sliding it around is not something I knew how to do, so I ended up riding in a dust cloud for a while. You would never see a dual-use trail for mountain bikes and dirt bikes like this in Indiana. It just doesn't exist. You can hear there's a guy on a two-stroke behind me, but there's just there's no way to pass. Better safe than sorry when it's a 30 or 40 foot fall off the other side. And the bottom of a 950 or any big bike, the pegs are further apart, so you got to watch where your toes are, too, keep them pointed in at the bike. Um, we did sacrifice an ankle on this trip, unfortunately. One of, one of the riders uh, caught her toe on a rock. So this trail, starting with the water crossing, this was uh, later on in the day. Um, we were riding some of the easier trails, going out towards the lake. A um, little bit wider, but still lots of rocks. 
and to go along with not knowing how to ride my bike very quickly off-road, I didn't really know how to ride it in the loose stuff. So you get to these loose rocks and I'm hanging on really tight because it felt like that's, you know, that helps you control it even though it doesn't. Staying loose is better. So we swam in that lake for a little while and turned around head back for camp. We were staying at the, uh, the Pack Saddle Campground, I think, right next to uh, Acker Lake. You can see the guy in front of me just took off. He's way more comfortable in the loose rocks than I was. I'm going too slow now, because I'm tentative. I hit this step and just stall it. It's not a hard step. It wasn't that steep. Just did not commit to it at all. Not bad at all. It was a great learning experience going out here, and I'm uh, really thrilled to be able to meet some more 950 riders. You just you don't see too many of them who actually ride off road, or really any of them. Period. And uh, I really appreciate them putting up with me kind of going slower than everybody else in the group and of course poking a hole through my clutch cover and slowing everybody down to that but fortunately it all worked out and the GoPro died right as I crashed a fitting ending